In this example, 2F, this is the first time that we are seeing a problem out of section 2.7 of the chapter, where we're dealing with motion that is up and down instead of side to side. We're still going to see the same problem solving technique, but there's going to be new and different sticking points that we want to be aware of and pay attention to. All right, so the first thing that we want to do in every problem, so we'll start with part A, is to draw a picture. So we have a ball, maybe make, let's make it a baseball, and it's dropped from a height of three meters above the ground. So in this picture that we're drawing, this is a three meter height, and remember that this is step one of our problem solving process. Step two of our problem solving process is writing down information that we are given in the problem, things we know. Now, when we drop a ball, that means that when we first let go, it is moving at zero meters per second. It is about to start speeding up, but instead of throwing it, we just dropped it. We also know that it started at a position or height of three meters. If we then choose the final height or the ground to be at zero meters. Now we might ask questions at different heights, but we know that based on setting the ground to be zero, it was three meters above that zero point. Now our step three in our problem solving process has always been to figure out what the question is asking us. All throughout chapters two and three specifically, we can rephrase that question. We can rephrase it in this format, find something when something else is true. We want to get better and better at this step, so all throughout these example videos, once you start to feel like you have the hang of it, pause the video and try to complete this on your own, and then see if your initial thinking matches what we've done. So we're trying to find the time, so that's find t, when the ball reaches the ground. The ground, by definition, is a height of zero meters, and it is very much not, this is very important, it is not when the speed is zero meters per second. That's one of those very common misconceptions that students have when we aren't thinking about this like a physics problem. The ball will still be moving quite quickly when it reaches where the ground is. It might then bounce, it might then do other things, but that's other physics than what we're dealing with in chapters two and three. So because we have identified that it's definitely not the final velocity is zero, it cannot be. Uh, that's something that if that was what you wrote down, that's fine, but go back to the lecture video before we continue to do more examples. We tried to focus on that common mistake in the lecture videos too. By filling this in, we have been pointed to the YT equation the equation that looks like the original xt equation, but we're using y instead of, instead of x to indicate vertical motion. All right, so step four is to write down the equation itself, so we can do that no problem. And as always, we don't have to memorize these equations, we just know, we have to know to look them up. Okay. And there's one more thing, and I'm gonna add it um, now in a different color, just to really highlight it, that when we have um, falling objects problems, it will start to fall downwards, and we know that gravity is downwards. Our acceleration for these falling objects problems all throughout section 2.7, gravity is negative g, which means that it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That is a known because of gravity. Okay, let's get back to where we were so we can plug things in. So step five is all of the math. So step five, we plug in that the final y is zero, the initial y is three, 
plus zero times our unknown time, plus one half times negative 9.8 times t squared. So let's simplify this a little bit. Zero equals three. Zero times t goes away, so that term goes away. And then one half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9 t squared. So we can add this term to both sides. So if we add both sides, 4.9 t squared, the entire term has to go on one step. And what we end up with, let's bring it over here so we can see it, 4.9 t squared equals three. Divide both sides by 4.9 so that that cancels. And we still have t squared, so we're gonna take the square root also. That way what we're left with is t equals 0 0.782 seconds. All right, right at the bottom. All right, so all of that math got us to our final answer. And then our step six check of does this make sense to us or not. So we've dropped this from a height of three meters. That's about 10 feet. Uh, so it's not an extremely, extremely high um, height, but you would need maybe a ladder to be able to drop it from that. And it should take, you know, about a second to hit the ground. Certainly if we went to the top of the ladder and we could count like one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000 before the ball hit the ground, that doesn't seem to match what our understanding of the world around us looks like. It's a small fraction of a second. If you're sitting at a table right now, you can kind of raise your hand um, above your head and drop a pen, and it will be about half this height, and it will take less than a second for sure. So all we're trying to do is rule out some really extreme values. And in that um, at-home trick of just seeing how long it takes, it does still take some amount of time. So if this somehow turned out to be a like tiny fraction of a nanosecond, that would definitely be way too fast when it's something we know that we can watch happen in real time. So that's what that sense check is for. All right, so that's part A completely finished. Let's move on to part B. All right, so part B is the same general situation. We have the ball, so this is our picture. It is gonna be dropped, so its motion will eventually be downwards and it's speeding up because of gravity. And we are dropping it from that same height, three meters, so the initial velocity, zero meters per second, because it dropped. Okay, we can remind ourselves that gravity is a known in all of these falling objects problems. That's step two. All right, so step three is rephrasing the question. We're being asked to find out how fast the ball is moving when it hits the ground, reminding ourselves that it's not zero. So we're asked to find blank when blank. There are two valid options here, and I'm actually going to show both of them. So first of all, if we're asking about how fast, what we're looking for is V in our equation. And the ground, we know by definition, the ground in our problem is y equals zero meters. So we can absolutely use the VY equation. Just a reminder that the reason we practice this technique is because it tells us exactly what equation to pick up so we never have to guess. Okay. But the other thing we could have done is said that we want to find V when t equals 0 0.782 seconds. The thing we just found in part A happens at the ground. This is also a valid way to go about this. 
Often in problems that have multiple parts, you can use one part to solve the other, and as we get further into the problem, there becomes more tools available to you because we know more things. So we're going to see both of these just because I want to highlight for us the fact that there isn't a wrong answer in a case where there's two things that we know true later in the problem. All right, so step four is to write down the equation. So we have the VY equation. All right, and we can plug in all of the numbers that we know. V is the thing that we're solving for. It's currently squared. 0 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times 0 minus 3. That means that V squared is equal to 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 3, which ends up being a positive 58.8. So if we take the square root of both sides, V comes out to be plus or minus, because any time you take a square root, you can get the plus or minus. The question asks how fast, which means we actually only want the 7.67, but that final velocity is going to be going downwards. So that's if we were asking for the velocity, we would actually need that negative sign. All right, I said I'd try, I tried them both, though. So the VT equation is a little bit shorter. So we're finding the final V if the initial velocity is 0 plus negative 9.8 times 0 0.782. And if it's still on our calculator, we can probably use the unrounded step from above. And so V equals negative 7.67 meters per second. And again, how fast means we don't need the minus sign because we're asking for the speed instead of the velocity, but we still need to use our calculations to get that instantaneous velocity later in the problem. So both of these methods work. This speed is not all that much. It's maybe about 15 miles an hour. And if we dropped it from the top of the ladder, it would be going reasonably fast uh, by the time it hit the ground so that it could bounce again, um, but it wouldn't be going like car speeds at that point. All right, so our step six check, it works. Uh, if we wanted to double check that the negative sign made sense to us, that would also be the time when we remind ourselves it's moving downwards, so that does make sense. And you don't need to show both ways when you're problem solving. I just wanted us to recognize that this was a valid way to do it, um, no matter which method you want to use. All right, I will see you in the next example video.